always coming here to San Francisco. We, I think me and all of us in the team barely sleep at night because we knew something big is happening and we knew this is the time to rally our community and to show Netanyahu here in the Bay Area how much we care about Israel's democracy. <laughs> We're fighting for 37 weeks in a row now, out in the streets, millions of Israelis. It's a historic protest. And, and for them, seeing all of us here, out today, protesting with them, shoulder to shoulder, is incredible. We've heard from so many members of our family and friends in Israel that they look at these pictures, and it's so heartwarming for them and, and, and help them keep going in this hard struggle. So thank you again for being here. You're amazing. Let's give another huge shout out to all of you. Yeah. And we are here today because indicted Prime Minister Netanyahu thought that he can come here to the U.S. and show to the world business as usual. Busha, 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 busha. Shame, 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 shame. Here and in San Jose this morning and later are here to show Netanyahu that we care about Israeli democracy and we won't let Israel turn into a dictatorship. Lo ni ten, lo ni ten, lo ni ten, lo ni ten, lo ni ten. And the, and the Israelis expects together. And since then, so many communities and rabbis join us. And we are so appreciate this joint struggle, shoulder to shoulder. And I'm very excited to invite Tyler Gregory, the CEO of JCRC, to speak. <laughs> Shalom San Francisco! You know, I'm proud to be here as the head of JCRC, but even more so, I'm proud to be here as a reform, gay, Zionist Jew. The last identity being the most important. And let me start with this. Anytime the Jewish people have been so divided that we can't see one another anymore, bad things have happened to us. We have to find a way forward united. We have to find democracy. Democratia! 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 And in addition to being united, left, right, Israeli, Jewish diaspora, at the core of our safety as a Jewish people is democracy. The democracy in this country has been sacrosanct in making sure that Jews by the millions who have come here have been safe and secure. Democracy in Israel has been equally as essential for the Jewish people in showing up with our values, but in making sure that every person is equal under the law. And let me be clear, we have fallen short in both countries. In this country, health care remains a privilege and not a right. And in Israel, gay marriage and other forms of rights remain a privilege. People have to go to Cyprus and get married to come back and not a right. But it is our democratic institutions that give us the chance to fight for equality. And that is what democracy is all about. Democracia! Democracia! When we look to Israel, you know, a lot of people ask me in the American Jewish community, you know, shouldn't we stay quiet? We're not citizens, except for Israelis that live here, but we're not citizens. We don't vote there. You know, move, move to Israel. Make Aliyah if you want to weigh in on such an issue. And I learned something very important from some Israeli friends. They said, nothing about us without us. 
Don't talk to us. Don't engage with us. You know, don't speak on our behalf unless we are in the room making decisions with you. That's what Unacceptable is doing. They're meeting with me. They're meeting with Jewish institutions. And they're making sure that the Israeli voice is part of the decision making of the San Francisco Bay Area Jewish community. And when Israelis are marching by the hundreds of thousands in Israel and all across the country and they are turning to all of us and they are saying, we need you. We have to be here for them. Yes. Democratia. 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 So I ask of you, number one, if you're an American Jew and you're not engaging with Israelis right now, sometime during this rally, turn to an Israeli and ask them what they need. Make sure that we are working as partners instead of talking over each other. This can be that galvanizing moment when Israelis and Israeli Americans and American Jews come together to make the difference, all of the difference. And number two, can you hold up the sign to HRES 61? Embrace HCON Res 61. This is the Israel Democracy Resolution. We are mobilizing with a number of organizations here to get members of Congress to co-sponsor this resolution, saying that democracy is at the core of the U.S.-Israel relationship. Uh, Ali, uh, for the last 75 years, Israel has been doing an ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians, forced removal from their homes, enforced by a series of massacres, armed expulsion at gunpoint, if you look at al Nakba, uh, destruction of hundreds of villages in al Nakba as well. Since then, they've expanded into the occupied territories, with the home demolitions, and as well, in order to enforce this stealing and stealing of Palestinian land, including that of my grandparents, you, um, they've enforced an apartheid system. What happened to your grandparents? So my grandparents are Palestinian. In 1940, they had centuries of lineage. If you look back at our last name, they had a presence in, the, in Palestine that goes back to 1287. The, um, uh, what happened to them was, amidst the bombing by the Zionist militias of Jaffa in 1948, they were forced to leave for what they thought would be two weeks, and Israel basically took control of the borders and never allowed them to return. So, um, their story is not unique. Their story is basically actually, with, if anything, more fortunate than the typical Palestinian experience. And, um, and you know, this type of... So what is this all about? I mean, it seems like some Israelis are unhappy with Netanyahu. So, right, so I think that what you're seeing is you're seeing the most extreme sort of right-wing government in Israel today. You are seeing a government that, um, that basically uh, supports complete expulsion of the Palestinians. You see, uh, really, I'd, I'd argue, a fascist government. And what you... Is that why he's meeting Elon Musk? I'm oh, sorry? Is that why he's meeting Elon Musk? Uh, why he's meeting Elon Musk, I, that is, you know, I, I obviously don't know the details of any particular meeting. Um, what I do know is that somebody who's supporting an illegal military occupation for the last 55 years, who's supporting a series of apartheid laws against the Palestinians, is not somebody who I want in my city as a resident of San Francisco. My name is Daniel. Uh, we came here for the rally against this uh, person. Bibi Netanyahu, who is destroying the democracy in Israel and probably also in the Middle East. Uh, so that's it. And he's visiting uh, Elon Musk yeah. uh, and uh, AI. He says he wants to develop AI. Yeah, yeah. well, it just uh, the, the, the real reason is that she, he wants, he and his wife, wants to travel around the world. Uh, with our taxes, no reason, no real reason to come here. Uh, the fact that he's visiting Elon Musk, who is a so disturbing person these days, is even more, uh, you know, it, it, it does it even more bad. Sorry for my rumbling. And, uh, the, since Elon Musk took over Twitter, there have been a lot of anti-Semitic material on Twitter. Yeah, Are you concerned about this? That's what I wanted to say, that the fact that he's coming, that Bibi Netanyahu is coming up to 
San Francisco to meet Elon Musk, who is uh, so, you know, um, so bad person these days, saying all what he says, doing what, all what he says. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible that uh, Israel leader will come directly to San Francisco just to meet him. Uh, but this person, Bibi Netanyahu, has no, you know, not real reason to be here. It's just want to travel at our expenses, at the, at the expenses of the taxpayers. There's no shame of anything at all these days. Uh, should he be in jail? It sounds like he's, yeah, he's been Yeah, he should illegal. be in jail, totally. I totally agree. He should be in jail till the end of his life. <laughs> and you have a uh, Free Palestine sticker? Yeah. What is that about? Well, I think that Palestine should be free. And I think that it's not just a matter of Palestinians, but also a matter of Israelis, because since, I mean, I mean, uh, until uh, Palestine wouldn't be free, uh, Israel won't be free also. That's my point of view. And can they so be free with a, with a separate state? I mean, it seems like... Yeah, they should have a separate state of themselves, should manage their own state, their own land, according to which they wanted to do. And Israel should not interfere with that at all. And all the lands in the Palestine territory should be free to them uh, so they can manage their own business. Is, is that possible? Any... Because it seems like that land is being well, taken over, yeah. they're building housing. I, don't know. I, th I, I think that what is impossible is to keep this business running the way it's running now, right now. This is impossible. So I don't know exactly how to deal with the solution. I'm not a politician, but as things are now, it's impossible to go on. Not for them, not for Israelis, not for anyone. So that's why you're here today. Yeah. Prime Minister. My name is Ellie Shapiro, and this sign is to demonstrate how important it is that for there to be a truly democratic Israel, there has to be an end to the occupation of the Palestinian population in the West Bank and Gaza, and there has to be true democracy for the 20% of Israeli citizens who are Arab. And do you think that can happen under a Zionist state? Zionism, it's a, pro, it's a country that's in process of becoming, but if the democratic institutions are destroyed, then no democracy is possible. This, uh, this organization, this demonstra these demonstrations are to fight for a process to make the country more democratic. What Zionism is or is not, Zionism is a national, self -libera national liberation movement of the Jewish people. The movement has become a state. The question to me is not relevant. The question is, how can there be democracy in that area for the people that live there, for the two peoples that live there, for the Palestinians and the Jews, equal rights for all the people who live there. And do you think the United States should continue to give economic and military aid to Israel? What I'd like them to do is to give economic aid to the forces of true democracy in Israel because they need all the help they can get now. But military aid to support occupation of other people, no. And there's been a rise of fascism around the world. Uh, Netanyahu and his government have met with some of these anti-Semites around the world. What do you think about the fact that now the Israeli government seems to be aligned with anti-Semites around the world, fascists? I think it's called what we say in Hebrew, Busha. Shame. Shame. He does not represent the democratic values that to me are an essence of Jewish values. And what do you think will happen if he's successful in implementing these changes in the Constitution, getting rid of, you don't have a Constitution, but getting rid of the power of the Supreme Court? That's the beginning of the end of democratic country. And then we're fighting autocracy in Israel, like we're going to, we would fight it if, depending on who wins in this country. And it's a, it's a worldwide tendency, so it's a, it's a worldwide fight. Well, the Zionists believe that if you had a Jewish state, it would end to anti-Semitism. Is that the case? This particular Jewish state, I think, is feeding anti-Semitism. 
because it's antithetical to true Jewish values, which values human life universally. And the taking over the land, or the, for the settlements, it's expanding. I mean, thousands and thousands of Palestinians are being kicked off the land. You think that there is a viability, any possibility of a two-state solution at this point in Israel? Personally, I don't think so. Personally, at this point, the, it's too much land has been, um, the settlers have taken over too much land. At this point, the fight is for democracy between the river and the sea. And what does that mean? That means that there has to be some way of Palestinian national rights and Jewish national rights being recognized, but I think the two-state solution so is much, not viable right now. Well, I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means. You have a secular state in the United States. I mean, you, the, the Christian yeah, yeah. majority, and I think that so. And some people would like to change that and have a theocracy in this. That's what it is, and I think you know a Jewish state. I think there are majority Jews. It would be Jewish culturally because there are majority Jews in the state, but the state itself. I would like it to be a democratic, secular state that recognizes equal rights for all its citizens. Okay, thank you. Thank you. My name is Alexander. I'm here to join this protest to voice my displeasure about not only the recent judicial issues, but in general the support for settlements and the uh, alliance with right-wing figures around the world. And uh, Netanyahu says that the, Israel has the right to take over that land that belongs to the Jews. I mean, that's the, his government is saying that. Right. Well, you know, a lot of people say it belongs to them. <laughs> it's not how the world should work. And the United States is supporting Israel militarily, economically. Do you think that should continue? I think we definitely need to start uh, showing some uh, 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 resistance, and I think that American Jews need to stand at the forefront of that. And if they're successful, the Netanyahu government is successful in implementing these attacks on the court there, what's going to happen to Israel? God knows. What are you concerned about? Well, I'm concerned about uh, uh, increasing power of basically a, a Jewish Taliban. And the idea of Zionism, the idea that you should have a Jewish state, are you in favor of that? I have very mixed feelings about it. Uh, I don't believe that states should be ethnically homogenous. Um, you know, looking at the history, you can see how in the 1940s there was a desperate need for a place to go. Um, I just wish that in the decades since things had been very different in terms of getting along with people who were already living on that land. And there's been a rise of fascism around the world in the United States and in Europe and other countries. Netanyahu seems to be meeting with some of these people around the world. What, what do you think about the alliance that his government and people in his government have with right-wing and fascists around the world? I think it's utterly repulsive. <laughs> That's all I can say. I mean, ideologically, do they have a bond? There's a certain bond. I mean, there are people who think that all the Jews should get out of their country and go somewhere else, and then, you know, there, there's an obvious alliance between them and people who say, yes, come here. Well, uh, Hitler, <laughs> the, I mean, the Zionists worked with Hitler, didn't they? As far as uh, getting Jews to go to Palestine at that time. I, I don't think there was a, as much uh, cooperation there as some people have argued, but um, the, uh, I, I, I absolutely uh, you know, am opposed to this turn that Netanyahu's taking, uh, uh, you know, working with far-right figures around the world. And the United States now, I mean, as I said, there's a rise of fascism here. Uh, Right-wingers, Nazis are organizing. Are you concerned about that? Oh, yes, of course I'm uh, very concerned about that. You know, at uh, uh, my parents' synagogue in Southern California, after the first uh, uh, Trump election, uh, the uh, answering machine was full of these hateful messages from people who were like, it's Trump time now. So it's, it's very dangerous. Well, I mean, some of the Zionists would say, come to Israel. That's the solution. <laughs> well, you Is know. You're being attacked here. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I was born here. My dad was born here. I'm, I'm happy to stay here. I, I think that Jews have a place in America, and we should fight for it. Okay, thank you. Sure. Seth Morrison, and I'm with Jewish Voice for Peace. They're protesting for apartheid. And they are protesting for a country that does not give full and equal rights
to all its people. Or get so what's what's this rally here? Well, this rally is a group that wants to, quote, save Israeli democracy. The problem is that Israel is not a democracy for all its people. Israel is an apartheid nation that does not treat Palestinians as human beings. There, there are laws that make Palestinians second-class citizens. If they're in the West Bank, they live under military rule. It is not a democracy. The Israeli Supreme Court, that these people are trying to save, rules against Palestinians over 90% of the time. So it is not a democracy. It's, a, it's only a country worth living in if you do it. If you're not Jewish, God help so you. So what are they afraid of here? Why are they having demonstrations? Well, they're Israel? afraid of the current ultra-right-wing government that is trying to reduce the power of the Supreme Court. But it's to reduce the power of the Supreme Court to protect Jews. It is a court that does not protect Palestinians. And are you in favor of the United States giving money, military aid to Israel? Absolutely not. Our goal is to end U.S. military aid to Israel because it pays for Israeli apartheid. And what do you think about Netanyahu visiting Elon Musk and the uh, Tesla plant? You know, what Netanyahu does is irrelevant. Netanyahu is the head of an apartheid government. He deserves to be sanctioned. He should not be allowed into the United States. He should be Wasn't he invited to the Congress criminal. to speak at Congress? No, he was invited to speak at the UN, and there's a under the U.S. hosting agreement, we're required to let everybody in. That's why Castro spoke at the U.N., that's why North Korea has spoken at the U.N., and basically, Netanyahu is a war criminal. He should be in the hate. So what do you say about the people here? They're well-meaning, but they don't understand the situation. Many, Many of them are Israelis, don't aren't they? I'm sorry? Many of them are Israelis here. Aren't yes, but they're Jewish Israelis who support Israeli apartheid. And why is that? The, the, that is the basis of Israel, is that it is an apartheid nation. It is a nation set up to benefit only Jews, not to benefit all its citizens. And I'm sure many people here will disagree with me, but that's the truth. And what is that? We are the largest Jewish anti-Zionist organization in the world. Okay. So you said you're here to counter-protest. What here is to your counter -protest, protest against these people here? Today? Well, we're protesting more to let the people of San Francisco know that Israel is an apartheid nation and that we must end USA to Israel. Do you support the Netanyahu government? We don't support the Netanyahu government, but the reality is that every government of Israel since 1948 has supported apartheid. They, you know, Israel started with ethnically cleansing over 750,000 Palestinians, forcing them out of their homes, massacring some, raping others. It is a country that was founded based on apartheid. And why does the United States support it? It's political. The Zionist lobby is strong and therefore support it. Okay. Thank you. So we're over there if you want more. Okay. My name is Ronnie Tal. I'm an Israeli American. I've been here for 48 years. Mm -hmm. And I believe in the American idea and experience, American constitution and concepts of morality in the world, human rights, and so on. You can call me maybe a progressive, but I'm not a crazy guy who is always uh, sold on his ideas. But what he was just saying about Israel being an apartheid state is uh, not rooted in history. Okay? Uh, if you really are uh, aware of the history of the Jewish people over the last 2,000 years, um, well, I have a question. I mean, yeah, American yeah. Jews are able to go to Israel. Sure. Okay, but Palestinians who are born there don't have the right to travel and go to Israel. Um, I don't believe that's true. So you, are you saying Palestinians have equal rights in Israel? No, absolutely not. Well, why do Jews, American no, Jews, no, have I'm more against, rights than Palestinians? I'm against the occupation of Palestinians. No, I'm not talking about it's the occupation. The I'm not talking about the occupation. I'm just talking about American Jews can go there and become a citizen, but Palestinians want to go there, they can't come in. Certain American Jews are not allowed in Israel also, for a variety of reasons. But the Palestinian question, just keep it aside for a second, it needs to be resolved. I believe in a two-state solution, absolutely. Do you think there is a reality of a two-state when 
the government is taking over the land and kicking people out. What are we fighting for today? What are we fighting for today? For that particular idea that the country has had Palestinians living there for quite a long time. And they have their rights. And we have to respect them. And we have to treat them with humanity. And we are going to do it, but we will not be able to do it without a democratic state. And where do you think Israel is going if they're successful in passing this, uh, getting rid of the power of the Supreme Court? Where What's going to happen to Israel? If, uh, if the right uh, wing and the extremists are going to win, yeah. that's a disaster. A disaster. What does that mean? Not just for Israel. It will be a disaster for many other nations on this planet. Because if they win, if they win, they are going to negate the whole idea, okay, of establishing, okay, a Jewish state. And by the way, when he talks about Jewish state, there are Arab who oh, lives in, in Israel. Yeah, they are not treating well also. I'm not a crazy guy who says that Israel is 100% right. Absolutely not. But if we're going to take Israel in the direction, okay, of authoritarian, theocratic country, uh, and the theocrats are going to win, especially the ultra-orthodox, then we are going to run into a really critical point, not just for Israel but also for the United States. Of and what does it mean as far as the transformation of Israel into a theocratic state? How would that affect Israel? You're already seeing it now. Women rights are being now trampled all over. How? Okay. In Israel, there are restrictions now on women in Israel in terms of their um, uh, access to certain places, in terms of deciding that the, the laws, okay, of the a, a Jewish Jewish religion, as is uh, appropriated by the ultra orthodox, are going to appeal to us, secular, modern, liberal Israelis. What? They are not human beings. They are not the ones who actually uh, the group that actually established the state that paid with their life. They served the country. And now you have a group of people that are clinging to the ghetto tradition in Europe and wanted to impose it on a modern state, a democratic state. This is not going to happen. I'm just telling you right now. Because Israelis, is, remember, there are six and a half million Israelis, all right? You can just, you can just say, hey, hey, forget about them. No, they have the rights too. And they have established a state that is modern democratic with human rights. All you have to do is read the first paragraph of the Declaration of Independence. Although it's non-binding, but it describes the spirit, okay, of Judaism, the true Judaism, and of Israelis, what they believe in. Do you, do you think the, the United States should continue to give military economic aid to Israel? Yes. Even though it's... And the reason is, no, not now. <laughs> the United States should use its influence, its power, its essential position vis-a-vis -vis Israel to influence events, I'm sorry, to influence events in Israel because the United States and Israel, the way it's been until recently, speak the same language as far as the fate of this world and are contributing to, to uh, promoting and advancing the cause, okay, of of of, of uh, uh, human rights, okay, women rights, and a modern approach to a multicultural uh, reality that is developing, by the way, in both countries. And he, Elon Musk, is uh, meeting with uh, Netanyahu. Uh, there's a rise of fascism around the world. Are you concerned? as an American Jew, basically, about the rise of fascism in this country and around the world? Okay, rise, I'm glad you said the rise, rise of fascism. You didn't mention the word anti-Semitism yet. Because I'm not concerned about anti-Semitism, believe it or not. Okay? Anti-Semitism is the problem of the anti-Semites. Okay? Well, if they control yeah. the government, isn't that a problem for the people? Uh, anti-Semitism, it is a problem, first and foremost, of the anti-Semites. They have chosen to lead a life in, in believing... What if, what if they control the government? No. 
Do you think you think Trump is uh, anti-Semitic? I'm not saying that we don't have to fight them using democratic means, but we should never let them use democratic means to impose their views on us. Fascism does exactly that, and we have the example right this in this country. They are trying to. They are very smart. They're using our democracy against us. We have to find a way, and I'm not sure we have actually found it yet. I haven't seen a person who has done it well yet to stop him from doing that. Example, Elon Musk that Netanyahu just uh, was, has met with this morning. The moment he purchased and owned uh, Twitter, guess what happened? He opened it up to all the anti-Semites, all the fascists, in the name of free speech. That's what I mean when you're using democratic means to take over. The incidents of anti-Semitism on, on, on uh, Twitter went up 400% since uh, it, since it took over. Are we going how, how do you think you're going to stop the rise of fascism? Because it's a global issue. It's happening in Poland. It's happening in many countries around the world. Argentina. Excellent question. We're doing it right now. We have to be patient. The only way for democratic uh, country to exist is to insist, and I mean 100%, on the rule of law. When I became an American citizen, the judge who sworn me in, Judge Murphy in Martinez, California, told us, a group of 35 new, new immigrants, I want you to remember, he said, this country is not a country of men ruled by men. It's a country of law. Where we well, I mean, the government, uh, yeah. uh, uh, huh? Trump is saying that he's above law, isn't he? Absolutely. Not to just say. He is pushing as hard as he can. He has been pushing as hard as he can to destroy, okay, the fundamental uh, institutes of law and order and uh, against the Constitution. Isn't that what Netanyahu is doing? And he's uh, supporting Trump, isn't he? Netanyahu cannot really do exactly what... Uh, but he's supporting Trump. Yeah, right? absolutely. But he, and the, and the reason is all the fascist leaders are, you know, they have to uh, cling to them. And this idea of Christian yeah. Zionism, I mean, the Christians who go to Israel, what do you think about that? Israel has uh, many Christians living in Israel, as you know. And um, Christians have control over their holy places uh, in Jerusalem, as you know, other places in Israel. And they are, they are treated fairly. And uh, Well, what do you think about the idea of Christian Zionism? Christian Zionism. Uh, listen, I have nothing against it. <laughs> They, they against... believe in you know that Jews belong in Israel. Do you believe all Jews belong in Israel? Hey, I'm living here. I've been living here for 47 years. I believe. I give you, I give you my most extreme position that if if as the current government declares that Israel will become quote a Jewish state and take steps to make it happen, like the other person talked about, a letter in, a encouraging non-Jews to leave, uh, and a, using policies that uh, discourage Christians and Muslims from living in Israel. Um, I'm saying that if they insist on that, I say, okay, let's make all Jews in, on this planet, 15, 16 million of them, have the right to vote in Israel. It's a Jewish state, meaning Jews have the right. Right? It's a Jewish state. Let's do it. Let's try it. That will, I will challenge them with it. Now, it's not going to happen, obviously. So, at the, same, at the same time, I'm going back to my idea. We must, must keep Israel democratic. That state that respects everybody who lives and does everything to help those who suffer in this war. Oh, yeah, I'm from Women in Black, and we are a, a non-organization that has been standing up against the illegal occupation of Palestine since the late 1980s. And we're here today in solidarity with all these other people. And we also would like democracy in Israel, but we would not like it as a Jewish state. We don't, don't believe in a religious state. And th th there's no democracy if you're occupying a people and taking away their rights. And what are these people here? They have Israeli flags. They support Zionism. What do you think about what, what's going on with them? 
they are, they are right in some ways, and they have a right to demand that that their government not be controlled by a dictator, that their country not be controlled by a dictator, but they're not going far enough. They think that democracy will come with Netanyahu in power and with Zionists in power, and I don't believe that's so.